Well, hi, welcome to At Home with Kim. I have my professional radio voice on and I'm joined by two dear friends of mine all the way from their house. Is it Noble Park? Springvale South. Close. Springvale South. I'm not too sure of what's a what's a what's a slight and what's a, a better it's all good all good regions lots of people we love from out there al and mel all the way from their home lovely part behind you al what is it yes it's my pride and joy my fiddle leaf fig that i've been growing since march oh well we bought it <laughs> we this bought size it. we didn't grow it from infancy but is yeah. it is it it's like your hair it's taking on lots of form and growing long yes yes it is <sighs> No, it's very good. We love it. We actually positioned ourselves in this area so we could plant tradition enough. But we're really yeah. excited. Before we were facing indoor and I was like, we have a nice plant. Make sure everyone can see the plant. So we had to turn everything around. Um, yeah, but that's yeah. Good plant. No, we're excited to you might need to turn it off. be here. I just got it up on my phone. So I, I just put it up on my other screen so I can see people who comment. John Jen yeah. Riley says, Hi, Jen. We love you so much. She's so beautiful. She says hi to you and Mel. Um, so I was overseas, sadly, one of my biggest tragedies of missing your wedding. The, my, my absolute commitment to Forge International, and it was my, my farewell, so I couldn't even get it. I couldn't even like be like, oh, I'll just resign next year. Um, but I, uh, but I, I was in Sweden, but Maria FaceTimed me from the wedding. It looked like a beautiful wedding. So how long have you guys been married for now? 11, 11 months yesterday so oh, it's almost 12 months yes. almost in a year we still haven't gotten out our thank you cards so we need to we need to do that to I didn't realize kids. that was a thing until uh, yeah right i feel I like we've got up until 12 months so we'll try and do that so but, we, but now we got an extension because of six months of lockdown so we, technically we you know yeah so we got a bit more time no but it's been it's been good so tell us how you guys met like this is always i do you're the last staff member that's agreed to come on not everyone loves being on the camera so but the last one who's agreed to come on so tell us a little bit of how you guys met in your story um yeah. the same one um so i was doing this is a while ago um so aaron gupta who we all love and know um i was with his um his brother um Mario. Mario, Mario, and Mario was doing some uh, youth uh, school camps and things like that, and hanging around and speaking there. So he invited me to come along with him and and do these types of things with them. So I would go with uh, to to different schools and we would chat there, and uh, I would share a bit of my story, play some games, hang out with them, um, and yeah, just kind of share around. And then one day um, went to this uh, to Al's old school, Heatherton Christian College. And they were doing their camp as well and did the- What year camp was it, Al? Uh, so it was year seven and eight, but I just graduated year 12 and Mrs. Gupta, so Aaron's mum, asked me and my best friend, Caitlin, if we would do, um, be like mentors. So we were 18 and then we were mentoring the year seven and eight. So you were there not as a student, but as a mentor. Yes, I was not in year seven. We I need was, to clarify this because every time I tell this story, I'm like, it was year seven camp and I saw Al walk out of the, yeah. out of her bunk room and I was like, oh, wow, Jesus, please let her not be a student. Um, oh, but yeah, no, I was grateful she wasn't. And then, um, yeah, so I remember her catching my eye as soon as she walked out of her <laughs> cabin. And then, yeah, from there I was like, cool, let's go on. I pretended like I didn't notice her and did the whole, you know, whatever, cool. Um, and then the very first time we actually interacted with each other, um, I came in and I was like, hi, I'm Melford. And she was like, oh, it's lovely to meet you, Methuselah. Um, she didn't get my name right. She called me Methuselah. That's true. <laughs> that makes me feel so much better about how people get your name wrong. <laughs> so often. At least you got it. You used to call, used to call him Mumford. Mumford. And then it was Mumford and Sons I literally while. could not remember his name. And I was like, long name starting with M. Methuselah was the only thing I could pull up. And it, he was, if he had any, he was like, I, th I think she likes me. And I just shut that down yeah. by calling him the completely wrong name. But, but no, it was uh, good. Um, every time I do tell this joke, this story, I tend to say it was a Christian singles camp. Um, but I've been told I'm not allowed to say that joke anymore. Um, yeah, but that was good. So, so Al, you grew up at Heatherton. Yes. Kingston yes. City Church, CRC Church, same denomination I grew up in. And did you always play music? 
yes. Oh, yes and no. It was kind of like when I was, uh, I've played piano since I was young, but it was only kind of when I was like 15 or 16 that John Villa, who runs the worship over at KCC, was like, Al, like come play keyboard. And I was like, no, I don't want to. Um, but then really encouraged and invested into me and a few people that you would know the Parkers, like Steph Parker, really mentored me in my singing as well. And then I kind of did both and in my like final two years at KCC, I was worship leading for the youth. Um, which was just so awesome. And I feel so blessed to bring that over into Casey now as well. So, yeah. It was, I was always, I mean, I, I have lots of dear friends there that I love and I've preached there and I've spoken at the school and, and so on and so forth. But um, I do remember it was, you know, it was a big deal that you guys decided to come over to Casey. It was like an envelope, um, like an Oscar yeah, event. It really was. Um, like we, we kind of set some time aside because that, you know, um, I remember God speaks to me in the shower, um, and that's like, usually one of people like, please. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it was like. Though, like, I ended up writing Alan an envelope, like a letter saying, "Here, this is what I've written for you. Um, this is what God's spoken to me over the last, you know, six months or whatever." Because when I remember when I, I was, as I was saying, God spoke to me in the shower. It was like, when you get engaged, you, you know, that's your last year in one of your churches, and you'll have to decide where you're going to go. Um, and I was like, okay. That doesn't, you know, help though, because I'm not yeah. engaged yet, and we still haven't, you know, we haven't even had this conversation properly yet. Well, it was because for us at that time, it was always when we're married, we'll sort out which church we're going to instead of, you know, when we're engaged, where we're going to go from there. Um, but then, yeah, when we had that 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 conversation, it was it was hard, and um, I think you know James hit the nail on the head when he said it to to the Al, you know, at this at one of these stages when you guys do decide where you're going to go, it's going to be a grieving process, so. Um, you know, seeing Al come across was great for us and, and amazing for us in, in that regard. But um, yeah, we, we saw you grieving and, and it was great to, you know, yeah. everyone kind of, as soon as you came in, everyone yeah. just sort of surrounded you and loved on you. So yeah. the thing I love about that, um, Al, is that like Maria and I, we grew up in one church. We dated there and we, when we left to plant a church in our 20s, your age, we grieved because we it was the church I know since I was eight years old. How old were you when you were born there? Like Dave Collie used to say you're a baby. Yes. Yeah. Oh, let me check that. out some of the comments. I love everyone that. was raving about Methuselah. Methuselah, <laughs> yes. Oh, so funny. Yeah, Dave. Dave Collie. And yeah, I was born in that church. My mum brought me when I was like six weeks old. I want to send mum the link so that she can jump on. Yeah. Um, as she well. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, that was that was cool. Um yeah, like you yeah. said, we end up writing a letter for each other and going, "This is where, this is where my heart's at. Um, please let us know." <laughs> like, and then you kind of clap back and was like, "I'm not ready yet. Um, God hasn't given me a definitive answer. He hasn't. You know, I don't feel peace mm -hmm. in it." So then, um, our six month timeline was then pushed back by another like month or something. So it was a bit yeah, it was hard. A bit hard, but it was great. Yeah. But I do love that about you, Al. I do love, you know, Mel's a strong leader, but you're also equally strong. And I think you complement each other and you you love each other deeply, but you also stand up for what you believe. And that's really good, right? Like people always say about me, like Maria makes me better. I undoubtedly believe that. Like, and I hope I make her better in a whole bunch of ways, not in cooking or cleaning or any of those things, but in other beautiful uh just say beautiful rainbow ways but like you you um you're you guys are good friends like I, I love that about you you know you fight well you wrestle with this thing and that's well, that's a good example Mel tell us a little bit of your story how did you come to see life Casey um so we were in the Catholic Church my family my mum my dad and my brother we were going to St Kevin's in um in Hampton Park and we were there for a while um but mum kind of always felt a need to go a bit more and, and a bit deeper with God and um, she just wasn't finding that in that church at the time. So she heard about this guy who was coming down from India who was doing a bit of like a crusade, like a Benny Hinn crusade type thing. Not a Benny Hinn, um, I know. Who, who would it be? Um, I don't know. I'm posting it to my face. But he was doing like a... Your mum uh, says hi too, by the way. What yeah. does she? Tell her to go back and watch the start where we talked about being born in the church and all that. She missed all that part about yeah. your yeah, family. And Dave, I noticed that my mum is a pastor. Shout out to Maureen. <laughs> yeah. Yes, love um, it. Sorry. See you guys. So we we were in a we were in a Catholic church and we were going around a bit. Um, we're trying to. Mum was mum kind of just got saved by this uh, this crusade she went to and she just went yeah okay um I, I want to know God more I want to do this so um and that was kind of my first interaction with 
church properly. Like I'd kind of just done all the things that I was doing at, at St. Kevin's just because that's what all my family and all my friends were doing. So I was like, yep, cool. This is what we have to do. We go there and I would like, this is, yeah, this is bad. I used to fall asleep in church and, um, <laughs> And, and I know if you guys know Catholic churches, but like it was pews. So if you, and we were always like in the third or fourth row every time for some reason. So I'd sit there and I'm a snorer. So I would start snoring in the middle of this guy's <laughs> sermon. I was like, this is not right. Um, but then we kind of traveled around a bit. We were church hopping, um, went to faith for a bit. We visited city life a couple of times, but then, um, yeah, we went to Epic, or we went to Riot Youth back then. Um, nice. And names we, in the 90s. Yeah. used to be called riot as yeah. well just fun fact yeah. must so be a go. very common christian youth group name yeah. it was. Yeah. that's um, like as hard edge as we get close to swearing riot yeah. <laughs> rebel you know um <laughs> Brent Turner, who you took over from was actually my first youth pastor um, really yeah so i went to her and my very first thing of city life was um i walked in and she was like so who's new here I was like, I'm new. She's like, cool. If you're new, come over at the end of the service. Um, and we went to this little lounge area and she made me nachos. And I was like, this is amazing. If this is what church is like, I want to be here. Um, and yeah, like, uh, you know, because we were, we would obviously been saved at that point, but we were find, trying to find where we fitted. And um, we finally found, you know, city life and we're like, okay, this is, this is, this is a place we want to be. And um, I remember after that very first youth night, I was like, I went back home and I was like, how was it? I was like, we're coming here on Sunday and we're going to see how it is. Cause I love this place already. This is what church is like. Yeah. I want to be there. Did um, your brother go? Yeah. My brother came as well. So I was year, year five actually. So I shouldn't even have been in youth, but I was like a big kid. So um, they all thought that I was like year seven already. Um, so you snuck in and we was there from the very start and just loved it. Like we fell in love with, with sea life and the church and um yeah, as soon as we did that, I was like, cool, um, how do I become a partner? How do we sign up to this place? And how do we start doing things? And yeah, you had to do life tracks one and two. And I remember in like the first three months, we decided, yep, cool, we're here. We signed up to life tracks. And before we knew it, we were doing like the visitor's lounge at Knox. And yeah, well, then we came over to Casey when it first opened. Like we were brought and over. And this was at your house, was it not? Yes, Epic Youth or the Casey Youth, yeah, started in my, my um, Hampton Park house. Really? Yes. Yeah. We started there. So the very first night we had about, I think we were expecting like 20 kids and we ended up having like 55 to 60 kids in Whoa. our house. And we're like, what is this? And where did it all blow up? <laughs> um, and we had like, it was very unconventional. We had, um, it was a mixed life group. And so we had like girls and boys in the same life group and we were journeying together doing, doing like life group and stuff like that. And then after a while, it was a bit more, um, uh, I guess, organization to it. Cause it wasn't, there was no youth pastor at the time. It was just um, Troy Smith who used to help us run that. So that was cool. And then, yeah, we eventually grew from, you know, like, it, you know how things peak at the very first one, you get a massive flux and then everyone sort of drops off for a bit. So we at 50, the first one, then down to like 15, 20, and we maintained that for a while. And then, you know, it steadily grew and we decided we outgrew the, ho the home and we had to find a place to go. And Cambria Secondary College is where we went. Really? Yeah, it's been, we've but been like the college. You guys have been here right from the start. Yeah, because uh, Dave and Bree came the first week, and uh, and you were a kids leader. Dave's just saying oh. saying you were a great kids leader. So oh. you grew up with a whole generation of the Dutlows, and mm -hmm. uh, who else was in that crew? With the, uh, we had the Groses were there. We had the Dutlows. Um, Lauren Hardesty was there from the start. Um, Lauren was there. Lauren Hardesty, yeah. Did, did Colin have a crush on her then? Colin <laughs> came maybe four or five years later, I think, or three or four years later. So, yeah, I, I don't know. You know who gets really sentimental around this time is Chrissy Morris. Yes, yes Chris, she just I remember when Chrissy in. came. Chrissy, um, I, the very first time I met Chrissy was at my kitchen. <laughs> she came in for a life group and I was like, hi. She's like, hi, I'm Mama Morris. And I was like, lovely. <laughs> lovely to meet you, Mama Morris. Um, it was great. We enjoyed it thoroughly. How Those are people are very important to our development and they, they encourage us and shape us. And um, so you did kids and then you became a youth leader under Tim or? Um, under Aaron, or oh, under Tim, yeah. So Aaron Apple was my first um, youth, oh, our first youth, second youth pastor at Casey. Um, yeah, so we had a few different youth pastors. Um, I wanted to in the comments. Yeah. Everyone's sharing their love for Chrissy, yeah. which is so true. <laughs> Yeah, 
So, um, yeah, no, it was that. And I just remember when I first volunteered, I did everything. Um, so I'd get there and help Adrian dog it set up and do sound and media and then go do kids church, pack up kids church, that go pack up life. media. That was the life. And then we finally, we grew in volunteers, which was helpful because that means I didn't have to do everything, which is fun. Mm. Yeah. So t both of you, uh, Al, you're involved in our creative arts with Gareth and, and previously Rod. You're an incredible worship leader and, and singer. And I love that song you did with Maria Make Room and mm. just, you know, you've got a beautiful heart. And Mel, you've been one day a week for probably 18 months, I'd say. Is that about right? It's just, I think it just ticked over 18 months, yeah. Yeah, you've been a day a week as James's assistant. And you've been, this year, you finished Bible College? Next year. Next yeah. Year. It's supposed to be this year. It's supposed to be this year. That's like yeah. a week. So a little bit into next year, and you come out with a degree in teaching and theology? I'm a minor in theology, yeah. Yeah. So what have you enjoyed about study? And tell us a little bit about both of your kind of hopes and dreams for Casey, both in the youth and in the worship or the youth worship or both. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, dreams, I guess, obviously, I want to support Al as much as I can and be the best <laughs> husband I can. I think that's the first thing that comes to me is definitely wanting to be the best husband Um before anything because i've seen yeah we've, well we've seen a few you know or heard people have heard. really shared with us um the negative effects of putting a ministry before marriage so yeah. that's something yeah. that i've tried to keep really mindful in our 11 months of <laughs> um <laughs> marriage but yeah sorry i yeah. cut you off keep it no up. yeah that's that's definitely thing i think um, that's really I'm, important yeah, and obviously, like, our hearts are both set on, we, we love our church, we love the church, and we want to be in ministry, doing whatever it is, whether it's volunteer, volunteer roles, whatever it is, we just want to be in the church, and, you know, we consider the church our family, so, um, yeah, we, we, but we need, we know we need to draw the line, and there needs to be a limit at, at times, so that's really important for us, is first and foremost, us, ourselves and our family, and then, yeah, wherever we can for the church, so... Yeah, because we love the church. So love. that's it. And yeah, we want to grow. We want to grow in all those things. Um, I, yeah. think, um, I think what our favourite spaces, um, which isn't hard to guess, but is kind of like the youth, young adults sphere. So obviously we both do youth, love young people, but also specifically during this time where youth has been more online, um, <laughs> we've loved our life group. We, we kind of started a life group in March-ish of this year. And I don't know how many people we've got. 15 16 people but we love it and they're just the best group of people yes, ever and it's literally made this covid period just so much more like tight-knit community of people that we love and that can chat with and do the day-to-day -day. so yeah youth young adults is probably where our hearts yeah. where our passion lies and we'd love to I think continue it's our calling yeah like yeah we, we really enjoy it like that's something we felt we feel called to do mm -hmm. and it's not like we don't find it a burden i think that's yeah. the best part about it. it's like we enjoy it so much that it's it's a now part of our lives and when we don't have it it's like something's missing so mm. yeah that's what we love about it yeah and what do, if you could like? I often do this exercise with people. Like if you could wave a magic wand, that sounds really Harry Potter-ish, but you know what I mean. Walk through a door, and what you'd like to see on the other side. Like if you could conjure up, it just gets worse. My description. <laughs> you know I mean? Like if you could dream, like what would you like to see? Because I was talking to Julian today, and he's doing some workshops on songwriting. Oh. And I would love to see us produce more original material and and really encourage artists and. We've got some beautiful original artists and very talented people. I love James's message last week featuring some, yeah. um, who was the girl who did the spoken word? Oh my gosh, Rebecca. Or yeah, Rachel. Rachel, Rachel, sorry. Fantastic. Like that, I would yeah. love to see more of that. But tell us what your heart, this is your moment. We've got five, we've got 11 minutes. So up till the prayer meeting, tell us what some of your hearts are. For me, any like uh, speaking on my behalf anyway, um, I've, always I think maybe six or seven years ago or six years ago I think it was my heart was really set on ministry and it's something that I've always wanted to do um so I would I can't wait for that next season of when whenever it is whenever God opens up those doors for us um and even if he doesn't it doesn't matter like you know in a volunteer whatever role it is I I can't wait to um yeah I just I just want to I just want to do his will I just want to be able to see that and I love seeing our young people come through the ranks and starting to see them you know are in their faith a bit more and and really step up into it. Mm. Um, I think, like I love worship. I can't sing or play or instruments or do anything that probably an owl can, but 
I can't wait to see a generation of young worshippers coming through mm. and really setting the standard, for, you know, for, for how they, they love God and, and showing, showing us all different ways of worshipping God. And that's what I'm excited to see. So I can't wait. That, that's what I want to see. I want to see mm. a generation of young worshippers coming out and really stepping in and owning their faith in that way. That's yeah. beautiful, Mel. How about you, Al? Yeah, very similar, very similar to Mel. I think one of my favorite dreams to dream is kind of like combining the youth and the church, like in terms of our avenue. So I love seeing youth worship, but I think it would be so good to integrate uh, youth into the church. So doing more. So if we had like a youth led church service and have like the young people up on the stage so that the church can really see the next generation. Cause I think that there's something so powerful about that. So it'd yeah. be awesome. And writing more songs. Like how cool was that um, album that Epic put out? Um, I am uh, last year or the yeah, year before. before. That was another one so works, powerful. Awesome. And I just think, yeah, like you said, what Julian was saying, writing songs, songs from the church, but songs from the youth as well and combining them together yeah yeah so when i was a kid i grew up at southeastern crc church down the road from kingston and steve swain was my youth pastor and maria and i were just like you got married you know young and we were youth leaders and volunteers under under steve and we helped the young adults and it was our life and one of our goals was to get as many people to steve's house yeah. and i remember this memory of 150 shoes um you know at the front of of um of steve's on you know we had to take our shoes off sonny was always really fussy about the carpet but like we're cramming in eating pizza and it's all those intangible wasn't about the best event it was, it was about being together with this youth and adult community and uh, i think you guys have the same heart so what do you love about youth and what what was some of your what do you think some of the things that you when we go back to live that i think because people are really missing that right like this is good it's a good communication tool but it's not the real thing mm. yeah you know? so talk to me about that because you've got great memories and you got you're contributing and there's been a great crew that you've grown up with you know the alex's and all of those so uh, yeah. alex Rosa, i mean sorry you know and, yeah. and all, <laughs> sylvia and eve and gareth and all of them all of them yeah mm. um i think a highlight for us was moving into the new building this year yeah um and that was amazing because you just saw how how our young people, no matter where they were from, they all came together and they just enjoyed each other's company. And that was something that I think will stick with me because I, I, I'm always sort of tied up in the inside. I was trying to make sure that was kind of running smoothly, but I walked outside and I was like, oh my gosh, look at all these guys. Like they're actually enjoying themselves. They're hanging out with each other. Um, and what I love about it wasn't, it wasn't clicky. Like that's something that you find, I guess, in, in young people nowadays is, is very, sometimes quite often you see them in clicks and, and things like that. But I, I couldn't, I just love the fact that they weren't clicky. They were all hanging out with each other. It didn't matter who you were, who you were, what, where you were from, they, they welcomed you in. And um, like, we, you know, we have a great partnership with Barrick Secondary School and, um, you know, seeing those Barrick Secondary College kids come through and just interacting with all of our, you know, all of our, church kids or whatever you want to call it they, they saw they didn't see themselves as you know barrack secondary and church kids they saw themselves as epic youth mm. i think that was really cool and that's something i can't wait to see come back when we finally get back together um yeah, just seeing all our young people come together and just just enjoy each other's company um like even gareth just said i just saw his comment um yeah, i can't wait to play see. just dance with, at, at, at youth oh, again that was the um, best that was like that's probably a huge highlight too like we did the 90s night which was, went off and um, we had we just had like just dance going on and all our young people were jumping up there playing around do, doing the dances and um and, and the best part was people had always like i don't have any rhythm i can't do this they were into it and they were just following the moves and having fun so yeah that was something i can't wait to see and, and you're right it is so important like this isn't this is real but it's not not being in the same presence as someone it's a huge difference when that happens and i can't wait to actually have that with them if people were thinking about volunteering, we get through COVID, might be for next year, but where can they help? Where are the gaps? What do we need more of? We need, obviously we're gonna go back to doing the breakfast program, yeah. and the school program, even though the youth group has moved over to Waverley. I think that's a good sense of, own, of ownership where we have church and we don't have to drag a trailer down to Berwick, but yeah. where can people, where are the gaps that we would love to see people volunteer? Um, definitely the breakfast program. I think you can never have too many volunteers for that. Um, do you I, want to share I, a bit I, about the breakfast program? Yeah, the breakfast program at, at Barrow Secondary College where we were, we were feeding up to about three to 400 kids at times, uh, just coming through, taking food. So 
uh, making t ham and cheese toasted sandwiches. So we need people to help us make those, get on board with that. Um, and, and even in, if you're not helping make them, you can actually step outside and interact with the young people there as well. Um, they thoroughly enjoy talking to us and, and hearing our stories. So that, that was always a, that's always a big thing to do. Uh, maybe you, you just love young people and see as well and you go, I want to impart something into them. Uh, no matter what your age, uh, you can be a youth leader. I think there's this yeah. thing going around that to be a youth leader, you need to be like 18 to 30 or something like that. It's not true. You can be a youth leader at 45. Um, in fact, we welcome some of the, our parents uh, because you guys have so much knowledge and we're, we're still learning as youth leaders. We're still learning. And if you can impart knowledge to us and help us impart knowledge into young people, we're, we're going to stand for that when we love that. So mm -hmm. um, if you want to do that as well, that'd be incredible. But yeah. And if I could just say as well for anyone that may be watching out of like the 19 or so people watching or people that will watch back, if you're kind of hesitating about volunteering, I could not recommend it enough and that was the first thing like when I moved to city life I was just like I know people will kind of like let, ease into it like take your time but I was like I just need to start volunteering because yes it's good to be in community every you know Sunday every Saturday but it's in the volunteers it's in the choir for Christmas where I met like Jen and meeting all these other people it's in all those other ministries all those other avenues youth leading worship teams um where you really find fellowship and you yeah. really feel a part of a part of the team and also if you're not thinking youth's not for you you can there's you're never so too yeah there's so many things you can do like and kids church man kids they church. need leaders yeah every time these guys are impacting the next generation that set them up for us and when we take them over from youth so have some dad, al is asking can he be a youth leader he's very excited <laughs> Yes, you can, Gary. Um, please do Life Tracks 1 and 2 at City yeah. Life Church and we'll sign you up straight away. Um. Yeah. Uh, also, just one more thing on the volunteering thing. If you are um, you can always volunteer to run a life group. Like, it's about doing life. It's an extension of yourself with other people as well. So that's an awesome place. That it's a great way to practice the Bless series oh, too. Like, we 100%. do that every year. That's, that's the basis of our of our uh of our mission of life at the moment so um yeah the doing bless, bless is a great way of doing but no better way to actually practice that than doing than with your own life group as well so mm. like we've seen that happen so much like we've seen our, our life group flourish just by doing that as well mm. so we're really grateful for it jen riley says that mel you were the guest choir conductor oh uh, yes Yes, um, when we did our Christmas production last year, which was amazing, thank you Rod and Gareth for organising one of the best Christmas productions to have ever graced the city of Casey. Um, yes, uh, it was incredible. I was a guest uh, choir conductor. Um, I know that this means there's a three-part harmony. Yeah. Um, and if I do this, that person goes up doing something. <laughs> like Hunger Games. It's like Hunger Games, yes. And if I do my left hand, the people I think on the left do things. I so this way, Sorry. this means oh, so it's, it's more gangster. Sorry, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a three-part harmony. Oh, Al, do you remember this when you used to be a worship leader? You did this behind your back? I you oh, still you got do. A good story. I've got an awesome story. <laughs> well, maybe not awesome, but um. So obviously, KCC learning like the signals, so like chorus, you know, pre-chorus, verse one, verse two. You're selling out the the, the team here. Now everyone knows I'm what's not... coming up when they're worshiping. They'll be looking for Gareth doing this or Gareth. <laughs> But like at, at KCC, we always kind of like hide it. But I know Gaz was always like to me, just like be proud about it. Like, yeah, we're going to the chorus. Gaz always like, whoo. Um, anyway, my story is at KCC, we do this for bridge. Um, obviously, so going into the bridge, whatever song you want. And when I was worship leading um, like five months ago for young adults, Kurt um, from City Life was um, MDing and I wanted to go to the bridge, but it's City Life Bridge is this. So it's been hard to get involved. So I was going to the bridge and I was giving him this signal and Kurt is like, what is she doing? Like, what is this? She's like, shuck it. Yes. <laughs> and it was just, it was just so bad. It was just such a funny mess, but so funny how. Luckily it was rehearsal. So yeah, that was, it was okay. It was just so really they just funny. kept playing the same, like the same chords uh, over and over again. I just kept being like, Kurt. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah. it's good. This has been great, guys. It's 7.29, perfect timing. We're going to switch over to the prayer meeting. If you're on Facebook Live, come and join us. Just DM us in the in the Facebook chat. We'll send you the link. But um, thank you so much. So many comments. Go back and read them and reply. People yeah. love you. I love you. I'm so grateful for your friendship and your, uh, uh, your service and your gifts. And uh, our youth in our church is in a better place because of you too. So bless you. So glad your parents came on, Al. 
I know. Shout out to my dad. So thank you so much. And join us on the weekend after the five o'clock service for Hangouts on Zoom. Um, and uh, David is hosting this week. And then after the nine o'clock service on Sunday mornings, every week at home at Kim at 7 and 7.30 for the prayer meeting. God bless you guys. Thanks so much. Bye guys.